We're excited. And why is that? Oh, I don't know. I've forgotten. No, I haven't. <laughs> we're off to France. We are. Yes. yes. Well, we were sat on a rainy August day, um, looking at the rain tiddling down outside again, and we said, why don't we? Why don't we? So yeah. we thought we'd pop back over the water again, and oh, it's going to have to suffer France again. God. It's just dreadful. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. No yeah. idea where we're going. Bought a ferry ticket, New Haven to Dieppe this time, so... Stay tuned for that. Yeah, so uh -huh. I, th yeah. I think we've got a vague idea. We, we thought we'd go down the west coast. Um, we haven't explored that area yeah. yet. Um, possibly down towards Biarritz Way. Mm -hmm. um, and then with a vague plan, eventually coming back up to the Alps to see our daughter again in uh, Morsi. Has to be done, doesn't it? Yes. So the prep, you see, the prep yes. is underway. The yeah. Peggy the Scoot is out. Yes. The van is um, in pack at the moment and we've got a fair bit to do. Well, she's off the drive, Peggy's on the back. Done a bit more, um, a bit of a different strapping system on there just to get some of the padding on the rear straps there. But that's, I think we're, uh, I think we're cracking that now. I think the garage is, yep, yeah, the garage is pretty full. Of course, the barbecue's in there. Of course, that was the most important thing. Storage pockets are jammed. More supplies of cable ties, gaffer tape, the most important things in the world and a set of spoons. What more do you need in a moho, eh? And then uh, I think in here is, in here is getting there. Cupboards are filling up. Nikki's icy of uh, of stock in the inside, so I think there's been floors up and God knows what, with stuff being squirrelled away in here. And uh, and we're generally on the last day before heading off tomorrow morning, the last day of packing. And of course, that's always an exciting time, isn't it? The angle malt stickers are on. The lights are tested on the trailer. You name it, we've gone through it. Departure checklist is uh, is in full flow on an XL somewhere. And every time I go, I always add something to it. So I guess it's getting longer and longer, but um, at least we seem to seem to be getting everything on there. And the awning even had a clean. It was absolutely mean. We hadn't cleaned it since uh, we were under those pine trees at the Rabina Resort in Spain. And so there was some lovely Spanish bird poo on there, some lovely Spanish tree sap, you name it. I had to climb up there on a ladder. So as Nicky turned it, I had to pull it because it was that sticky and gungy. So yes, that was a major job, but I think we're there. It's had a good siliconing on all the joints. So hopefully when we get to the first site, uh, that we're going to use it, it will wind out effortlessly. Fingers crossed. Good grief. It's about half past six in the morning. It's almost dark. The moho hasn't seen the dark for ages, but it's all sh ship shape. All the nooks and crannies are, look at it, it's all full. Teas, coffees, fridge got to fill up. Leave in about 20 minutes. Drawers are full. Oh, everything. New acquisition. A drainer. Look at this. It's got a spouty thing that you turn and it comes out underneath there. And it expands as well. The things you can buy eh, for mohos fits perfectly. Wardrobes are packed. Everything's done. Yeah, look at it. Absolutely rammed to the gunnels. Had a bit of a water airlock yesterday when I was filling up the van with water. And um, so that was just, so I had to fill the tank right the way up, open all the valves, open all the taps, start with the nearest one to the pump. Eventually cleared it, lots of gurgling and bubbling. Because we cleared it down in July last year, or July this year, I should say July last year, July this year when we got back from our uh, last adventure. And now we're off again. Look at that, it's actually almost, almost daylight.
Well, we're well and truly on the road now. <laughs> and uh, we've just been to, oh, what's the uh, services called? Peas Pottage. Peas Pottage. Don't you just love that name? Yeah. Um, quick sort of snack there. Um, we're about an hour away from... Uh, New Haven. New Haven, that's it, you yeah. You were trying to remember, you were going to say Folkestone then, weren't you? I was, you? yes, yeah. <laughs> We've always left from Folkestone. We're not tunnelling this time, no. it's, we're going on the water. We are indeed, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. So that'll be a something very different for us, because I haven't been on a ferry... No, ages. Uh, years, I think, actually. Ages, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I years. Can't... Well, I certainly haven't been on a ferry on a motorhome, so yeah. that'll be interesting. And we can uh, take you through the process if you've never done it as well. and uh, Or if you have, you can relive it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was. Uh, it looks looks fairly straightforward. It was. Um, I got uh, downloaded their app, DFDS um, app for the New Haven to Dieppe crossing. Uh, that makes life very simple. So there are sort of electronic tickets on the app, and the the reason was uh, the reason why we went on the ferry this time was because it was about 150 quid cheaper than the tunnel. So. We paid 325, 325, um, which includes the van and the Peggy, Peggy's trailer, which is on the back. Well, hopefully it's still on the back after traveling from Wales. And, uh, uh, which is about 1.6 meters by about two meters wide, the trailer. So, um, and that's what uh, we paid in the end, which I thought was very reasonable. So might not be the last time we go on the ferry. No, exactly. And uh, it'd be nice to have a, a rest from driving as well, to be honest. So we can have a, yeah. a four-hour crossing. Yeah. Um, so we'll be able to have a, a nice break from driving. And then the other end, we plan to stop at an air. Uh, looks like a free air, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, that free air, yeah. Kind of pinpointed. Um, it's quite quiet, um, off the beaten track, but um, yeah. ideal for us, really, because it's not actually that far from Dieppe. Um, yeah, about 12k. Uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll show you that. Yeah, because um, it'll be what four hours. We'll be getting in about nine or ten o'clock French time. So yes, a uh, quick 10k in the dark, and uh, and that'll get us there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's a good job you charged your uh, head torch last <laughs> night, wasn't it? Because we yes. need that. Yeah. On my departure checklist, it had charged the head torch, and I was thinking, yeah, I'm probably going to need that yes. when uh, when we get to our little park up. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, worth its weight in gold, that thing. Oh, Great. yeah. Had it for years, haven't we? Have, yeah, when I was on the building sites, finding stray tools when I was clearing up uh, and it was going dark on us when I was building. <laughs> yeah, building playgrounds. So, yeah, we'll, um, we'll hopefully, if we don't get lost ourselves, uh, sh show you the run into New Haven, the ferry port there, and uh, through check-in and all the bits and bobs that... Uh, that we'll need to go through uh, to get you on the ferry. Looking forward to it, guys. Look at these hills as well. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah. Ditchling Beacon and the Downs, lovely. Not quite the Alpe d'Huez, of course, but uh, they're our UK version of the Alpe d'Huez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are very pretty. You've cycled up those, haven't you? I have, yeah. So I did the uh, London to Brighton a few, a few times. Yeah, and yes. Uh, I've done that one, yeah. I'll have to do that. Oh, it's good, yeah. Yeah, it did look good. I remember doing it on a really hot day once and it was lovely because people were standing by the side of the road squirting cold water at you as you cycle past <laughs> and uh, that was a lot of fun and um, Ditchling Beacon, it was always my challenge to cycle to the top without stopping which I did manage to do and uh, then arriving in Brighton I uh, 
park the bike on the beach, ran into the sea to cool down after my 16 mile ride. Very <laughs> funny. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. That's my memories of this area. <laughs> Lots of ice creams as well, I expect. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it wasn't really a race, it was just a day out. <laughs> yeah. With uh, lots of uh, coffee stops and ice creams, yeah. But it's a lovely day today. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's actually saying 27 odd on the van. I can't, can't believe it. No, 25, sorry, yeah. I can't believe it's quite that hot, but um, no, it feels nice. Certainly warmer than Wales, that's for sure. In that drizzly grey morning that we left in Tenby this morning. I know, this is so much nicer. Bizarre and to think. It that, is. Yes. And um, so on this trip to France, I shall be perhaps doing the odd review of the ice creams that I come across. <laughs> should they present themselves? What, you'll be having ice cream? Well, should they present themselves in front of me? Um, because ordinarily, I just eat them. Um, but I think I should become an ice cream connoisseur. Oh, yes. And do a detailed review. Become one, you already cream. are one. Oh, well, well, I yes. Am, yes, yes. Ice cream eater. Yes. Yeah. I've just got to think of some good phrases now to describe them. <laughs> Watch this face. And I can honestly say I've never been to New Haven ever before. No, no. First. I was today years old when I first went to New Haven. What's that? 36? Uh, 37, come on. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing. It's Nothing. only a number, folks, it's only a number. Can't miss those signs. No, there's no picture of Moho on there though. A bit disappointing no. that. Oh, Car and lorry, but no Mohos on the sign. They need to sort that out. Forthwith. They should, they should. Here we go, we've got North Quay Harbour Station. North Quay straight on. Oh, it's a high of activity right here. in front of us, yeah, I'm assuming we'll probably good. have to stay over to the left-hand side of the lane, I guess. As we go through... Well, this is quite quaint, isn't it? I was expecting some huge, <laughs> yeah. great, bustling port. Yeah. It's a porter cabin. Reminds me of when we went to, um, what was it, Southampton Airport once, when we went to Flew to Jersey. That was, a, that was like a tin shed, wasn't it? That's right, it was, yeah. Is this and it? Was it? A, I think it must be. Look, it is, yeah. Well, I yeah. shall go and investigate forthwith. Forthwith. Well, there's Resi the Moho. Waiting in line, so it's, it's a tiny little place. Certainly a lot, um, a lot smaller than I thought. Nice little buildings in there, though. Some toilets in there, check-in desk or an information desk, I should say, and then it looks like you just line up here and it looks like we're just heading off. Well, they said 3 p.m. and they're absolutely spot on for the start of check-in. So, we're just coming up to the uh, check-in. This is our first check-in. Uh, interesting to see what's... Passports. I know, yes. Have we got the passports? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, hopefully yeah. an e-ticket on my phone, which is... Oh, yeah. Let's find it. There we go. E-tickets on there. That's the DFDS, um, gives you all your details, gives you which, uh, the ship you're on and all those sort of bits and pieces. Good, so, good. yeah, pretty Excellent. good. So, we're in lane six, which we've been directed to. Yeah, passport's shown, that's all that was. And uh, there's the ferry in the distance, by the looks of it. Come in number six, your time's out. Oh, look at those bikes, aren't they nice? Oh, they are nice, yeah, I like those. And what I might also do is, um, is take the, uh, Take the uh, air suspension right up, just um, 
so it makes getting on the uh, up the ramps on the ferry a bit better in terms of the overhang at the back of the van because it's quite an overhang as you probably know if you've got a seven eight or more meter long van so we just lift the back right up so that we don't get any drag from the tow bar and the um, tow hook on the back gonna take it up a bit more in fact I uh, normally run, I sort of try and run between about one and a half and two bar pressure, so uh, just wound it up to um, sort of up towards four bar. The lift, in fact, that you get if you're right at the bottom at zero up to roughly where I am now. So in terms of um, what that equates to perhaps as a measurement um, is uh, about 65 to 70 mil lift at the back of the van. So it's not massive, but um, but certainly, you know, even when we've been doing park up, stuff like that, in terms of leveling the van out from left to right, it's actually pretty useful for that. So that perhaps you only, you know, you can go up your your ramps relatively easily. Um, and, uh, but, but 65, 70 mil is also a pretty good lift when it comes to things like coming onto the ferry here, where uh, you might have those ramps to go up and the back end is just in danger of catching then uh, that does make uh, enough of a difference just to perhaps avoid that problem and of course i guess if you had the full uh, the full vb then uh, of course you could get almost double that effect i expect if you took the front right down back right up and that sort of combination but uh, so this is only the vb semi air we've fitted here and of course if you want to know a bit more about that uh, or about this system and the fitting under there where the compressor is hiding under this step here then uh, do check out the channels, a film about the installation of the VB semi air on this, uh, on this van on the channel. Now we're off from our lane now. We're on the move, we're four the move. Oh, what's that, five past four, so about 55 minutes from departure, hopefully. A trawler or two down there. New Haven lifeboat as well. Here we go. Into the depths. Been swallowed by a giant ferry. Yeah. Here we are, right down in the depths. In the depths of the ship. Oh, it looks like we could be first off actually, because yeah. we're heading right for the front. Which would be good. Right up near the front. Right result. locked up right time to go up on deck very importantly if you choose to bring some lovely indeed bit of fresh air types. Quite a mixture indeed. As long as we fit through that gap there though, I'll be happy. Wow, wouldn't that be exciting? If we saw any of those fabulous beasts out on the water today. Lovely. I've seen some dolphins when we were out uh, down the Clevi Estuary Way off the end of St Mary's but uh, but never seen one on a cross channel ferry or should I say in the water next to a cross channel ferry I bet it's got quite a big old water tank on this slightly bigger than my 120 litres might take quite a while if you're using one of them I suspect Lovely. 
nice evening for pottering out on a little boat like that. A bit of fishing perhaps, very nice too. Ropes away. A very, very easy process guys. And uh, we've met a couple of people actually in the queue to the lineup who swear by this crossing as, as one of the easiest and cheapest ways to, uh, to get across the water. So it may not be the last time we are on the New Haven to Dieppe ferry. Are you sad to be leaving the UK again? Ice, ice, sad to have to go and find the ice creams in France again. <laughs> the robots are taking over. Recycling cars to make robots. Another 10 years, it could be reality. Don't forget to breathe in as we get to the gap. It's quite a width on this, can't be much left each side once we go through there. Look at those for park ups there on the seafront there. Isn't that nice? What a view that would be. There we go, the sun's even come out for us. Isn't that lovely? Look at that. Those white cliffs. So stereotypical south coast. One for you Pam in New Zealand. Don't know whether you'll have many, uh, many a white chalk cliff in New Zealand. Let us know. Comments below, as always. <laughs> Engines well and truly under power. Three and a half hours, nearly there. The lights are starting to show in the distance there. Well, the ramps are ready. They've just lifted up. Dieppe by night. Lovely indeed. Welcome to France, folks. We're back again. 5th of July it was that we had to sadly come home, but we are now second week in September and as we said earlier after that horrendous August thought we just got to come back has to be done doesn't it so we're about seven miles away now from um, the port at uh, Dieppe and we're very close now to our um, camping car site that we're going to be staying in tonight well it's an air actually isn't it yes so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Free, stop. yeah free stop well, this was uh, where we were last night, in the pitch black. It's about quarter to eight this morning. It's like a, um, like a sort of mare, no tear. It's car park, um, which is on Park for Night, I found it. And you come in this uh, entrance here, and you can see in the distance there, Resi the Moho. So this on the right here, I think, is a sort of no tears office building. And, um, some, and also some tourist information here. Um, cash point there, and then round this side of the building, there's um, just down the other end there where that little green light is on the wall. That's um, some toilets there, which are 50 cents. So bring a 50 cents if you need the loser there. A little bit of a uh, local information. The office, the traditional uh, flags that they often have outside the uh, no tears office. Got the obligatory cup of tea as well for a stroll round in the morning. And yeah, around this uh, hydrangea roundabout, and then into this space here. Just the one other van in here last night when we got here. So uh, I parked up on the road and came in and made sure I could get in in the pitch black without having to do too much manoeuvring. So there it was, straight in and uh, straight in and park up. Recycling next to a bottle bank there, and then you've got all this area here where it looks like as well um, that that field is available as well. But it was absolutely, I mean, apart from you can just start hearing traffic now because it's 
quarter to eight, but um, it was absolutely pin drop quiet last night. Didn't hear a thing. And it looks like you can park on the grass as well, so yeah, very nice indeed. No water, no water facilities here or, um, you know, drop out or anything like that. But as I say, it's got toilets and it's, a, it's only about six, seven miles from the Dieppe ferry terminal where we came off last night. So absolutely perfect for that, really. Very nice indeed. Right, time to get Nikki a cuppa. Little beehives over there. Nice to see, and they've got some information as well about some bees here. 20,000 species of bee in the world, and there are a thousand of them in France. But they are threatening a little bit of rain this morning. You can see it's a, you can see it's a tad grey there. But uh, later on, after about lunchtime, it's supposed to get uh, it's supposed to get pretty good. Fingers crossed, eh? There, so you can see um, Porta Dietrich there, and then if we zoom in, we're at uh, Varankaville in the left hand one of the two. So tap on that. Varankaville sur mer. There we go. So, good old park for night, eh? Comes up trumps every time. So we're at the box office of the Jard Les Jardins d'Etretat, which is on the northern, the northern coast of France. Gardens famous for visits from uh, Claude Monet and one or two others. And the gardens are uh, about seven or eight euros to get in. We're going to take you around and show you one or two of the highlights here. There we go, there's a uh, pictorial representation. There's some hedge work in there, look at that. What does it do? Oh! It's a musical tree. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Go on that side, you hear it. Well, I'll be a musical tree. It's a Harry Potter style music, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's a first. Never seen a wind up tree. Amazing how it's all um, loads of hedge work in here, but it's quite cleverly done. Navigate you around the garden. different themes around the garden itself. Now that is a picnic bench. Look at that. What a lovely little cafe, set out. Tables hidden away in the trees and hedges. Yeah. 
Look at that. You can see why Monet was inspired to recreate some of that. It's a little town of Etretat just below us there. And the gardens have just been uh, off to the left there where we've been. Very nice too. Straight across the water there. Somewhere over there is probably Portsmouth. By a few K is um, is La Havre. Look at that nice spot for a golf course as well. Ooh. Very nice too. Over the other side as well. Got yet more little arches. Cut away. A popular spot. Jardin d'Etretat on the coast there, north coast of France. And we've uh, met up with some friends who had a lovely day with, Joan and Peter, and uh, hi to them. And we're now heading off south, where we're headed in the general direction of Le Mans, and we've stopped at a tiny little village um, in, a, uh, in a park up that we found, uh, again on park for night, free park up. And um, it's really lovely. A bit of a sunset just peeping through in the distance there you can see and look at this thing ahead of us with all the yellow lights on it it's actually and i've not seen one in france before but i bet there are probably hundreds everywhere first time i found one it's a baguette machine can you believe that anything that spits out baguettes has got to be pretty good in my book especially if they're fresh of course look at that Fresh baguettes. Wow. So if they refill that in the morning, I might just have to come and check it out when there's a bit more light to actually see what's going on. Unless there's somebody hiding in the back here. Do you think somebody hiding in the back with a sort of chef's hat on, a baker's hat? No, no sign of a door. So it must be a full on vent then. Modern technology, eh? First of all, it was pizza machines at the last tour we did. Instant pizzas, and now it's a baguette machine. Yeah, so there's just one other van here. Dead quiet, lovely flat car park, so don't need any ramps or anything. Some lovely, uh, lovely old buildings in the village. Very peaceful, as you can hear. Just hear the one or two birds before they go to bed. And somewhere in here, somewhere in here is Nikki. Are you in here, Nikki? Oh, here she is. Oh, no, who's this? Oh, it's a uh, good evening to you. Well, in fact, while we're at it, we could talk about what we thought of our first two days in, uh, look at it, look at it. The place is absolutely strewn with things. Gadgets charging the lock, cups of tea being drunk. Can't be better, can it? It's time for that camel and honey. 
Caramel and honey. Amazing. Yes, exactly. Anyway, so can you believe? I can't believe we were in Tenby yesterday morning with 300 odd miles to do to get to New Haven and by by this evening we're 90 miles north of Le Mans enjoying our second um, freebie. freebie freebie park up yeah. for the night good old park for night swear by it or there was actually probably several places in these lovely villages that you could stop in um, little car parts in the middle of them which um, which have no restrictions no height barriers no nothing and um, you know really it's um, it is a country that very much welcomes motorhomes, there's absolutely no doubt about that, is it? No, this is a lovely spot here. My only mm. slight concern is the um, church bells. Oh yes, it rang at half past eight, didn't it? Yeah, it's rung twice now. On... Will it? Yeah, so, so... so let's just hope... No, that was my phone, that wasn't the yeah, bell. Yeah, it wasn't the bell, no, it wasn't the church bell. <laughs> um, I'm just really <laughs> hoping louder than that. that it doesn't go on through the night, because no, we no. might end up taken off somewhere else well, yes, yes. <laughs> if it does <laughs> otherwise we'll have very red and bloodshot eyes next time we see you but yes, yes. <laughs> anyway um anyway part for night a shout out for part for night a shout out for of course for that ferry trip over that four hour trip really lovely way to get across cheaper than the tunnel great fun and the and, process um, was ever so quick yeah, yeah by compare yeah. by comparison to some people who've said going from dover across mm. has taken a bit of time either side of the ferry this was actually relatively quick Yes, it, it was. Yeah, because it was. Yeah. It was literally you're pulling up in a porter cabin. It was. Uh, it was a lot more straightforward, as I yeah. said earlier. It uh, so yeah, through the porter cabin and off out. Well, <laughs> and it was a similar size port the other end at DF. It was. I'm uh, sure it's the same person that did everything. Did the, pa <laughs> did the passports, took the yeah. tickets, served yeah. you the tea, drove the ferry. Yeah, running. I'm sure, ahead. it's the same person. Yeah, and they were probably at DF when we got off because that was like a half a second it took us to get off the boat, and then we were out on the road somewhere. So, yeah, very easy. Um, anyway guys, we uh, will see you again on the road, I'm sure, in a week or so's time for the next episode. Thanks ever so much for watching, of course, as always, and we'll see you again. We will. Very soon. See you guys. Bye.